horrible, horrible injury that he got, but he's he's put a positive image of himself in hospital on Twitter. How, how's he doing? What's the latest? Yeah, he's doing very well. He uh, he's he's back home or coming back home, and um, yeah, he's in great spirits. As imagine, it's it's something that hugely disappointing for him and for us. But uh, he's had the operation, gone very well, and uh, yeah, he's just now it's now just all about his recovery. So uh, so yeah, but he's he's in good spirits, and uh, yeah, we'll look forward to seeing him in a few days when he can come in. Uh, is it still far too early to get any indications of how long he's going to be out for? Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think these injuries can be between four to seven, eight months. So, uh, so yeah, so we just have to, to wait and see in that. But with these lig- ligaments and, and what was seen then, it, it's probably going to uh, be a little bit longer. So, uh, so yeah, but um, still very early. Can I ask you about Yannick Vestergaard? I mean, it, it's been made pretty clear to us that you, you do want some cover with, with the injury to Fafana and, and we've been told that things are progressing um, with Southampton over Vestergaard and, and maybe even a fee's been agreed. What, what can you tell us? Yeah, no, clearly there's been contact by the clubs. There's nothing finalised as of yet, but uh, but yeah, as soon as soon as soon that happens and hopefully it does, then we can, we'll can we be able to confirm that. Is, is he up in Leicester at the moment? Yeah. Okay, so do you hope that it could possibly be done in time for him to play Saturday? Or yeah, but we'll we'll have to wait and see. As I said, the the clubs have been in contact. We've got permission from him to be here, um, and then everything uh, hopefully can be, be organised, and then we'll see if he's available for the weekend. Good man. Uh, in terms of other transfers, I mean, it's been a really successful window for you already. If, if you get Vestergaard, that's a centre back. You've got a full back in Bertrand. You've got a midfielder in Samara. You've got a striker in Dakar. Will that be you done, or is there still more positions you want to try and strengthen? Yeah, ideally we would. I think the uh, as, a, as a, it's a huge testament to the club and, and our planning. You know, has gone back uh, into last year so that we could get the players in as early as we could. So that has really, really helped us for this summer. Yeah, we would like to to add more if we could. And we'll see how the market goes over the next few weeks. So we uh, we know what we would like, whether we can get that type of player or whether we can afford to get that type of player. We have to wait and see. But uh, yeah, we, we would like to do something more. Well, could I ask if that might be a winger? We shall see. <laughs> Good man. Um, speaking of transfers, there's been a, a really big one in the last couple of days. days. Um, Lionel Messi going to, to PSG. Brendan, what do you make of that? Is there a little bit of disappointment as, as the football purist that you are that he's not going to be playing in the Premier League? Well, firstly, it was a really emotional press conference and and I absolutely adore Lionel Messi from watching him and, and my team's facing him. He's... Um, what an incredible footballer. So I think you've seen the genuine sadness of him uh, when he left Barcelona, a club that he's, he's been at for over 20 odd years, uh, went from a, being a boy to a man and, and being an absolute hero there. So, um, so yeah, there was a real sadness watching someone who looked like he, he didn't want to leave. And, uh, but he, he's, he's obviously gone in a new direction and, of course, we always want to have the best players in the Premier League, but um, but yeah, he's gone to a fantastic club in PSG, and uh, it's a half decent front line they have there now with him and Neymar and Mbappe. So, so yeah, he'll go and find a different experience now in a, in a great city, and yeah, I'm sure he'll I'm sure he'll do very well there. I can only imagine what it must be like for a manager to have those three at the front. But 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 speaking of life as a manager, I mean, you'll have seen what your old club did last night in the Super Cup. A, a big decision from Thomas Tuchel to to sub his goalkeeper specifically for the for the penalties. We've seen it happen before, but but I think he did speak to to Kepper and to Mendy before and 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 talked about this being the plan. How difficult is it from a manager's perspective to make a call like that? Well, it is, but I think that. Uh... It's a great credit to Thomas, and and you've seen the 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 keeper himself that, that came off. So it was clearly in the plan. It's not something that he's just done off the cuff. You know, I think he said himself all the statistics and all the analysis and all the work that all the guys do behind the scenes uh, told him that he was uh, the keeper was the, the guy that was best statistically in saving penalties. And I think what he's done is he's, he's preempted that. So when the actual situation comes, and you do that as a manager and a coach the situations that you prepare for and plan for, 
so that if it arrives in that moment, then uh, then everything is calm and stable. And there's so I think it was it was great management by him. It was great work by his analysts, you know, at the club to to be able to give him that information. And then obviously, Kepa himself then has to produce, and uh, he did that, and they won. So it's uh, and it was great for Chelsea all round. I want to ask you about the Community Shield. Um, a tremendous performance and a tremendous result against the champions. Let's you know, let's let's put it as it, as it is. What what does that performance and that result do for you and the players on uh, just before the the kickoff of the of the Premier League? I think it put us in a great place physically and mentally. Uh, of course, when you're going through pre-season, you're, you're trying to build up that fitness, and uh, we arrive into the weekend's game in a in a really really good place. I think between now and the international break, we'll be looking to increase that level of fitness whilst trying to win games. I think, don't think any team is going to be at their, their very, very highest level physically. But uh, but certainly for us, we knew we were always going to be tested against uh, an outstanding team uh, that moved the ball so well and, and really test your organisation. And I thought we were able to, uh, uh, to play very well in the game. And obviously, like what we always try to do, win games, be strong and... Uh, we end up getting the penalty at the end. So it leaves us in a really good position. Uh, players had the nice feeling again at Wembley, which was good. And yeah, it sets us up perfect for the weekend. Uh, it, the team made history <clears throat> last season, winning the FA Cup and, and fifth in the, in the Premier League. How do you top that this season? Well, firstly, you can't lock yourself into the past. That's first and foremost. I think what we've done is we, we have a memory of the FA Cup now that... And, a, and an achievement that's going to bind us all together for the rest of our lives. You know, the the, the players, the management, supporters, an incredible day. And uh, and to, to create that history was amazing. However, it's it's long gone. It's in the memory. And now you, you have to keep looking forward. And for us, it's, as I said, not locking ourselves into that moment, but really getting ready for a really exciting future that we have as a squad. And uh, and we know we can improve, and where you can improve, that's what your idea is. Every single day is to get better. So so yeah, I'm really looking forward to the season. I see the maturity in the players growing. I see their their game understanding. I see their confidence, and we're ready for another long but really exciting season. Good man. I'll let the rest of the guys talk to you about Wolves and and, and the team news and that sort of thing. I just want to ask you one last one, Brendan, if that's okay. Yeah. Your old club, Chelsea, have strengthened. Looks like they're going to get Romelu Lukaku as well. Um, how do you see the battle at the top now? Uh, I mean, you guys are on the fringes of it, but do you see it as a, a three-way battle for the title? Chelsea, City and, and Liverpool? You just never know, Rob. I think the, the teams that you mentioned, Chelsea already, you know, super strong squad, very talented manager. And, uh, and then you add to that Lukaku, who's, uh, you know, been a phenomenal striker. And uh, so he's going to give them something. You know, Manchester United have strengthened. You know, Jordan Sancho is a outstanding talent. Um, for Ryan, if he's if he's in officially, then that, that'll be very good. His experience and it was really going to help them. Manchester City have bought for me a, a world class talent who will go and demonstrate that at the very highest level with already a world class squad. Um, so and then you have. Liverpool, who an incredible club with a brilliant manager again and, and outstanding players who are getting players coming back. So it's uh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be super competitive, I'm sure. And uh, and then everyone else is, is fighting to to be on the cocktails. Good man. Best of luck, Brendan. Cheers. Thank you. Hi, Brendan. You OK? Hi, Naz. Yep. Good. Um. How pleased are you with the, the way the, the new signings have, have settled into the club? Because um, that's got to be a, a big factor, hasn't it, when you bring in those new players? Yeah, I think I, I always allow, you know, the, the that first season for the adaption. Some will, will come in and, and adapt very, very quickly um, to the not just the football, but the life in general. So, uh, and and you always get some that come in and, and adapt straight away. So, um but we're really, really pleased with, with the three that we brought in. Ryan, with his experience and quality, is going to be huge for us. Uh, not only that, he's going to really be a great mentor for Luke Thomas, who's a, a big talent as a young player. And then, like you say, the two boys, Booba and um, 
and Patson coming in full of enthusiasm, full of power, technique, strength, and they just fit well into the spirit of our group. So, yeah, I'm excited to to see them and see them help us over the course of the season. It was a nice cameo, wasn't it, from Patson? And we we saw glimpses in pre-season and uh, uh, beyond that with with what he can bring to you, you and uh, the team. Yeah, yeah. I thought him and Kalechi came into the game last weekend and continued with that thrust. And we wanted to win the game, of course. So we they came in and they brought us that energy and and power. And yeah, Patson plays on the last line, so he's always looking to get him behind. He's got great pace, and when he normally gets in there, he finishes. So, uh, so yeah. So he, having him to add to to Jamie and Kells will be uh, will really help us this season. It could be an emotional one against Wolves, potentially with uh, Raul Jimenez back for, for them. And obviously they're under new management. What have you made of uh, the changes there and what are you expecting? Well, no, no, clearly he's done a brilliant job in his time there and, uh, and obviously moved on in a different direction. Um, they brought in Bruno, another manager that they, they clearly the hierarchy know very well. Uh Done really good things at Benfica. He's coming into the, the Premier League, which he will thoroughly enjoy. It's it's the most competitive league in the world. He's normally played mostly 4-4-1-1 in his time away. And I think he played that in his first few games in pre-season. And they've they've gone back a lot more to, to 3-4-3 and how they've been playing. So, uh, so, yeah, but all our games against Wolves have been tough since I've come to here. Uh, they've been very tight. And uh, I would expect this one to be tight as well. And in terms of uh, having Harvey Barnes back as well, he was back with a bang after that injury, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's such a huge player for us. Um, he's not obviously up to to speed physically as of yet, but just to have him back, you see him in training and, and in the one v one situations, and he's he's just constant. He, he just gives you such a threat. So, uh, so yeah, I thought he he did well, really well in the game last weekend, and and. Day by day, he's getting physically better. So he's he's one of the top young players in this league. And this, I'm sure, will be a really exciting big season for him. Rob sort of mentioned it earlier. How much are you enjoying seeing this squad and this team develop? You've got a real nice mix of, of youth and experience. And each sort of season, they seem to be progressing further. And that's got to be surely enjoyable from your point of view, uh, managing them. Yeah, it's, it's why I do the job now. My my priority is is always teaching, teaching players, helping them grow, helping them develop, uh, creating a culture and a standard of performance that allows them to keep pushing, and never to be content. Uh, and that's what we've tried to do each year. So each year we've improved on our points and we've tried to improve on our goals. And this year we'll look to continue with that. So, uh, and it's the beauty of this job. It's the biggest satisfaction. Yes, the wins and everything else and the trophies, but the ultimate satisfaction for me is seeing development and growth on and off the field. And and that's the, the joy of this group. You see it every single day. Brilliant. Thank you, uh, Brendan, and best of luck for the weekend and the season ahead. Cheers. Thanks, Naz. Okay. Jason Bourne, please. Cheers, Anthony. Thanks. Well, let me just get my notes up here. Um, Afternoon, Brendan. You've mentioned Hiya. you've mentioned Yannick Vestergaard there. What has sparked your interest in him? I know, obviously, you've got one or two defenders out, but what is it about him that's that's sparked your interest and in why you, why you want to bring him to the club? Well, I think without going into too much detail, before uh, Yannick is confirmed as a sign-in, Jason, I think it was pretty clear we needed a centre half. That was probably what sparked the interest. To be honest, we were very light in the area. I think I said in the last. Time we probably spoke. So, uh, so yeah. So it's uh, it's a great tribute to the club that we could get our work done very quickly and and look to see if we can sign a player of quality. So, but once we have that done, then then of course I can speak much more on him. Indeed, just on the transfer market itself, though, Mikel Arteta was speaking a bit earlier. Just one of his quotes: <laughs> "We're talking about probably the most difficult transfer market in this industry for the last few years." And we are trying to adapt. Do you recognise any of that? Do you find this an extremely difficult transfer market as as Leicester City? I mean, this is even with some clubs spending hundreds of millions of pounds, Manchester City, Chelsea uh, and Manchester United. Yeah, I think for the majority of clubs, Jason, it is a really tough market. 
of course, there is the ability for clubs in the Premier League to, to, to spend money. And of course, some will be able to spend more than others. Our circumstances is, is different. You know, we, we, we always have to have, you know, our, our success really is all is built around planning, innovation and, and common sense. And we don't look beyond those three aspects, whether it's in recruitment or, or managing the team. So, uh, so we have to have a common sense approach. We know we need it to improve, but of course, uh, the pandemic will have hit many clubs and, and, and like ourselves. So, uh, so yeah, so it is. It's a difficult market and it will be for most, but there will be exceptions to that. And uh, yeah, and if teams can spend the money that some have, then it, it's good luck to them. Rashid Ghazal and Dennis Pratt not involved at the weekend in that Community Shield game at Wembley. Are they going to be part of your plans going forward? I know there's, you know, Rashid's been linked away, Dennis Pratt's been linked away as well, but are they going to be involved with you going forward this season? Rashid is someone that uh, most definitely will will look to move on. Um, I have to pay testament to him. He was back here. He was in his uh, the preseason, and he was he was excellent. Attitude was really good. Model professional. Um, but he, he's at the stage in his career where he's been out on loan playing, and he wants to continue playing. Uh, so he obviously wasn't involved. And uh, and Dennis is someone who he'd returned later from uh, from preseason training. So we didn't involve him in the game. Where it ends up for Dennis over the next few weeks will remains to be seen. You know, if he's still here, he's obviously a very valuable member of our squad. But naturally, he's an experienced player and, and probably wants to play that little bit more. But in the meantime, he's here. He's a good guy. He's available. And uh, he'll be ready for us at the weekend if we need him. It's going to be the first time at the King Power um, since March last year when fans are going to be out not just in a few thousand, but 30,000 hopefully this weekend. How special is that going to be? Very, very. It's just uh, it's just been so nice over the last uh, few games that we've had, both in pre-season and at the end of the season, having supporters in. But then to actually, you know, we, we, we sampled a little bit of it against Villarreal. We, what was it, about 17-odd thousand there? And the atmosphere was absolutely brilliant. So to then get a full house, it's that'll really give the players a great... A uh, great boost, and, and obviously us all. So hopefully we can uh, we can you know start off where where win a full house, and we'll get us off to a great start in the season. And it is the opening weekend of the new Premier League campaign. Excitement, new beginnings. What excites you especially about maybe that first game of the season, Brendan? Yeah, it's the first step in in what is a long season. You know, we had it last year where we. We had a lot of games, but that's what you want. If you're playing lots of games and you're going deep in competitions, then you, uh, you're you having success. So, um, so yeah, it's I'm excited by it. Again, excited, as I've said, about the, the players, seeing them develop, seeing them grow, seeing them mature and seeing how we how we can grow and develop from having the, the winning mentality that we've, we've created. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that's the exciting part. The final one from me, Brendan. 11 years ago today, the owners took over this football club from Milan Mandaric. Obviously a hugely successful period of promotion, league title, FA Cup win, and that community shield last weekend. How do you see the next 11 years panning out? Obviously, there's going to be details released today of the stadium expansion as well. Yeah, I think it's a, an incredible tribute to to Convicia and, and his legacy that um, you, know, you see some clubs that uh, go through what this club has gone through, especially after his death and the decline that can maybe set in. But it really shows you the strength uh, of leadership here at the club and also the collaboration with the, the local councils and everyone here in Leicester City to continue with this amazing journey. As you say, the, this first decade of their ownership is... It's been incredible success, but what I love about the 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 ownership is the ambition to keep improvement. You know, each year uh, they want to be better. They want to make facilities better. They want to improve, and that's as someone who is always striving for constant improvement to have that alignment with the with the ownership is amazing. So, so for me, it only bodes well. Exciting plans, like you say, 
uh, to come out on the development of the stadium, which will not only give us more supporters, but it's going to bring in extra revenue, extra jobs to the city. So it's a real, real exciting period uh, in the history of Leicester City. And, uh, and hopefully the next decade, we can continue with that success. Cheers, Brendan. Many thanks. Good luck on Saturday. Thanks, Jason. Thank you. Hi, Brendan. Um, hi, Ian. hi. I just wonder whether I can pick up on another couple of injuries, please. Johnny Evans, uh, plantar fascia, is that any closer to having a resolution? And is Timothy Castagna available for the weekend? Yeah, we're just going to make a final uh, decision on uh, Timothy tomorrow. He's he's trained well this week. He's obviously been doing a lot of physical preparation work without joining in with the squad. And then this week he's joined in. Uh, he's got his mask now that he feels comfortable in, and uh, he's virtually done everything that we would uh, that he would want, and we would want to see to participate in the game. So we'll uh, we'll have a chat tomorrow after training, just again see how he feels, and then we'll we'll take it from there. Um, Johnny, he was out on the pitch today. The plan for him is always after the the international break. Um, but he's out, he's he's doing sort of multi-directional work and then obviously we're just assessing the pain of that. So, um, so yeah, so the timeline for him was after the international break, but Timothy hopefully will be much sooner than that. Um, I don't think we've had confirmed who your captain or indeed vice-captain are as yet, Brendan. There's been lots going on. Uh, I'm assuming that Kasper Schmeichel is your captain, but who's your vice-captain? Yeah, well, we confirmed that uh, yesterday with the, with the squad. So, as you say... Um, Casper has been the vice captain here uh, behind Wes uh, for a number of years, and now he'll step forward into the the role as the the club captain. So he's uh, been a wonderful ambassador for the club on and off the pitch. He's a top class goalkeeper, and uh, and he will then step into that role. and And for me, the he's he's absolutely perfect for it. You know, he's uh, very inspirational on the field. Uh, He's very ambitious, but he's also selfless and uh, he'll lead the guys very well. And in supporting him as the vice captain will be Johnny Evans. Johnny's someone, again, uh, who's had a wonderful career, uh, been here a few seasons now. He knows the club. He, he understands what it's all about. He offers great support to our younger players, different type of character as well to to Casper. But he's, he's virtually won everything in the game and he's still very hungry to keep winning and improving. So both those guys will be, be great great help to me as, as the manager and also to their teammates. And uh, yeah, they're excited by the responsibility as well. Brendan, we've got a couple more questions. Uh, we've got a technical problem, so my colleague Owen's going to ask them. I've got to get out of the studio. Long story. Owen's going to carry on, but I wish you the best for the season. Thanks, Ian. Good Cheers, luck. Brendan. Thank you. Bye Cheers. You, you Cheers. better run. You better yeah, run. Indeed. indeed. Cheers. Owen, it's all yours. Owen, are you with us? He's one as well. Which is why Owen's getting sorted out. I think Mark from ITV, do you have a question on stadium, Mark, that you wanted to ask? Yeah, I do. Yeah, Brendan, just following up on your answer for the stadium, I know that you've you've seen the, the plans and you attended um, uh, a, a night last night with some fans. I just wanted to, to get your perspective, really. I know you've touched on it before, but what exactly do you, do you make of the plans? They They look impressive and uh, a wide range of facilities as well for not just the club, but the local community, it seems. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's a really exciting when I seen the images last night and, um, and looking into the future, I, I obviously hope I can be here to see it firstly. <laughs> so it's nice when you see all these great plans, but you always, hopefully you're good enough to, to be here to, to see them finished. Uh, but now secondly, I, I think it's, it's, like I said, uh, for Susan Whelan, who's obviously uh, really driven to to protect the legacy of, of Kunvichai, this was obviously something that was very important to him and uh, his family, and she's really driving this through. And and that collaboration with the the local council and and the people of the city, it's it's a really exciting period. So uh, so yeah, it's as I said earlier. Um, when you lose someone of the leadership of Convichai and everything he brought to the club, it could very easily decline and uh, and, and, and the club drop off. But the uh, the strength of of character of all the people involved to keep pushing through and uh, 
to ensure that his dream uh, is, is alive and uh, and the support of the, the the club to the city is also there as well. So I think it'll uh, it's a really exciting time and period to be involved in the club.